Hello and welcome back. Let's hop in the arena and see if we actually get to go there right now. Oh. Okay. I guess we're not going to the arena. Where else might we go? Let's just fucking run around the place until we find something, I guess. Hello? Uh, sector, unknown, uh, Lakomora. Extracted from the bloody remains by the Caring Hands Campbell and Neurophage Tentacle of Homunculus Elevanth. Elevanth, I don't know. Uh, the rising currents carry the smells of pain, blood, ichor, and failed abominations. The smells of the dark city. With my wings flung open, I weave a path through the spires like a dark lightning bolt, chaotic and unpredictable in its patterns. To fly is to hunt, and everyone in flight hunts everyone else. Even I, Scourge Gotharit Bloodfeather, do not have the privilege of inviolability around these parts. I may become someone else's prey, except probably not today. This day I am the hunter. My homunculus modified olfactory receptors pick up the scent of my prey, and I tread cautiously as I approach it. Is it the one that we've been seeing a few times, perhaps? The stench of monkey is foul but varied, and the scent of my prey is quite telling. A powerful specimen, brash and reeking of the blood of others. I descend to the minaret that grows out of the nearest spire and provides me with an excellent view. The minaret? Look, this might just be uh, that I don't know as much English. In, in, in Swedish, when we say minaret, um, it almost always exclusively refers to uh, like the like the towers of a mosque like a Muslim mosque the the towers from which they uh, sing the prayers or chant the prayers or whatever it is you do I don't know I guess it's this little thing on the artwork uh, anyways uh, Accelerated reflexes allow me to assess the situation in a fraction of an instant. It is time. This is weird. Surely I am the prey. And now I'm making choices for the hunter that is hunting me. Or am I misunderstanding what this is? I still decide to wait and get a better look at the prey. A female monkey, a pampered upper caste cub who was fed and equipped with the best their race can offer. I wonder if that is dependent on my backstory. It certainly arrived. Uh, it certainly arrived in the dark city recently, the city which has not yet managed to leave a mark of perpetual expectation of doom on its flattened snout. The most glorious game which clings to life the strongest and leaves the sweetest death essence. The reflexes urge the muscles to act. I act. The shard carbine spews forth a stream of crystalline projectiles that howl and shatter as they pierce the flesh of the prey. A deadly slashing blizzard drapes the street in bloody snow. The bodies of random passers-by caught in the fire failing, falling to the ground. And this is a common occurrence in the spires. Everyone around me flees from the field of death whose borders I have made clear. The prey falls, but is still alive. I did not expect the hunt to end with the first salvo. The prey is badly injured. I can easily finish it off in the open. The prey. Oh, I don't like that. Summons companions to its aid. A mistake. I unleash a fan of crystalline shards and f the flesh of the prey blossoms with new cuts from my projectiles. 
Anyone who tries to approach it will be killed by the brittle shrapnel. The prey should have run away, not giving me more chances to cripple it. The prey is weak. 50-50, coin flip, let's go. The prey is trying to locate me among the tangle of spiked minarets. Ooh, success. His frantic gaze is looking for my winged figure. The hyper pupils allow me to examine the prey's face. I can see its eyes scrutinize my gear. There is no need to hide anymore, so I stand up to my full height and emit a wailing battle cry. Let the prey know that I will kill it. I have only one option. The prey breaks into a run. Clever. By escaping from the open streets, the prey has deprived me of the advantage of my long-range weapon. But I will not let it escape, so I spread my wings and soar over the alley, pelting the prey with bursts of indirect fire. The chase must not end too soon. The petitioner wanted my prey to die slowly. The petitioner, eh? Hmm. There is a strangeness to the movements of the prey as it dashes away one moment and freezes the next. My receptotropin altered pupils are adept at detecting movement, but they are worse at perceiving stationary objects. And my prey seems to be aware of this. I did learn this from someone. The prey? That's bad. That's bad. That's good. Uh, the prey grabs someone's weapon from the ground and returns fire at random. The air fills with gunfire. As soon as the prey fires the first shot, everyone starts shooting at everyone else. This chaotic firefight engulfs the entire street. It spreads across the dark city like a wildfire, mindless and violent. I am forced into a steep dive, spinning around and dodging the tracks of multiple projectiles. The damn trick worked, and I let out a frustrated squeal. The hunt continues. The prey manages to elude me for a moment by ducking into a crowded street. The jet booster on my back emits a steam stream of ghostly blue flame, and I continue my pursuit. As I storm into the street, I see the prey again. This is a nice catch. The petitioner wanted me to deliver the prey to her, but I decided to do something different. When it is over, I will impale the body of the prey on a spike protruding from the highest spire. Uh, so that it serves as testament to my victory. My flight is swift. Everything unnecessary and atavistic had been cut from my body so that air currents carry it like a projectile from a splinter rifle. I won't... I don't understand what atavistic means. Is it like superfluous or... In some other way, not necessary. I don't know. Let me look that up real quick. Come on. Slow, slow, slow. Telephone. Uh, atavistic. Relating to or characterized by reversion to something ancient or ancestral. Ah. Okay. Um. Alas, this is also my weakness. I am so light, even a small obstacle can throw me off course. But the prey has no idea how vulnerable I am in flight. Ah, fuck. If it, it is frightened. The prey may have managed to n not to succumb to blind animal panic. But its jittery movement clearly reveal that reason is being dampened by instinct. Seeking to slow me down, the prey. I could do that. I might do that. I can do this. I like the sound of this. As much as I am a talky character, I'm digging this uh, option here. Difficulty modifier minus 40, shouldn't it be minus 60? Oh well, I'll fucking take it. Slips away with the skill of one who has lived the, her, here their entire life. The prey glides through the alleys of the dark city, with amazing skill for an outsider, pulling away from me. I pursue it with a cry of excitement, but my advantage is palpably dissipating. 
The conclusion is drawing closer. As I turn the corner... Fuck! I keep failing these things. I triumphantly realize that I have driven the prey into a dead end. It is time for the massacre. And the poison I received from the petitioner uh, as payment for the hunt is contained in the crystalline projectiles and should have worked by now. It will slow down the nervous system of my prey, weaken its muscles, and render it unconscious. Fuck. When I spot the prey, I am pleased to note the early signs of the effect of my combat toxin is having on it. Its movements are slowed, and it's blinking often. Spots are floating in front of its eyes by now. A coin toss. The prey lunges at me first. I realize too late that it is not desperation, but cold determination behind it. Interesting. Will I fucking die to this? In the blind alley where my prey is about to die, there is enough room for me to spread my wings and soar. It does not grant me an opportunity to do so, and kicks me back into the cramped street. The prey wishes to fight where it has the advantage. With my wings folded, I ratchet up to the jet booster and rush past the prey like a projectile. I am airborne again. I am flying. The fight will be on my terms. Everything will be over in moments. The outcome will be decided in close combat. Wasting no time, my prey and I seize one another in a violent, furious embrace. Every decision made over the course of this fleeting hunt is being weighed, tipping the scale that will ultimately determine the winner. I am unpleasantly surprised when I realize the prey is aware of my combat style. It covers the vulnerable spots I like to cut open with my mon monomolecular claws. Well, this knowledge will not save it from death. My embedded glands spew hyperadrenaline into my bloodstream, and my artificially grown muscles convulsively swell under the porous fabric of my ghost plate. I torment the prey with claws protruding from my forearm and knees, and the prey... Huh. Nope. <laughs> Probably not. I don't know why this is so easy. Is it supposed to be this easy? Because he's so light? I don't know. Banks, the prey, banks on brute force, trying to break my fragile bones and shatter my joints. Succeeded. Powerful blows crush the hollow bones drilled by the crafty homunculus. The lightness served me well during the flight, but has betrayed me here on the ground. I lose my footing, my body going floppy like a rag. My strength waning, I reach for the shard carbine and shoot the prey right in the face at point-blank range. The crystalline, projecta crystalline projectile whizzes within a hair's breadth of its face. A crushing blow turns my magnificent weapon to rubble with a mournful crunch. Yeah. The prey grabs me by the throat, lifts me into the air, and snarls. It seems to want to know why I attempted to kill it. Would I tell if I could? About my petitioner, Kekeros the Witch. Should I know this? Uh, about how insulted she was by the deaths of her fossilings, the blood sin proselytes, in the arena at the hands of my prey. About how badly she wanted to spite the prey's master, the sour-tempered homunculus Tevantius, who had arranged that insult. I do not know, for my throat is crushed, and only a faint wail escapes it. I die. I am dying at the feet of my prey. No, at the feet of a monkey. A humiliating end for one who earned the status of Apex Hunter of Komora through torturous alterations of the flesh and a bloody pilgrimage to the very top of the spires. Does it hurt to perish like this? It does. Is it fair? It is. The chaotic burst of violence that bloodied the streets of Komora ends just as abruptly as it erupted. Such is life in the spires. Okay, fascinating. Yeah, I figured that I would get a injury uh, from that. A uh, fascinating way to implement one of those uh, little sequences. 
Uh, will this remove the injury? Yes. Good. Good, good. Uh, now, Arena? Perhaps? Uh, but that was definitely an interesting little sequence. I quite enjoyed that. I will proceed now if allowed. Keep your wits about you. I'm not allowed. Okay. Uh, let's once again go this way, I suppose. Should I talk to the um, to Tervantius? Is there money to be made? Perhaps. Can I get Heinrichs? I would appreciate that. I want to explain myself for letting him fucking continue to be tortured. I wonder if I can lie. <gasps> oh my god! Okay, okay, it's happening. Sink, was he always here? Did I just miss him? Did I just never check that cage? I don't know. Or maybe ended up here now. Singing softly under his breath, the man of enormous proportions is intently stripping raw meat from a bone with its teeth. Uh, his unwashed red hair... Give me a second. It's falling into his face. His beard is matted and blood-stained. The aforementioned teeth look more like fangs than any human equivalent. A less knowledgeable person might not recognize this giant humanoid, but you are well aware that this is a space marine, an angel of the Emperor. The scar tattoos on his body, which at first appeared abstract and primitive, together form the angular image of a wolf's mouth with bad fangs. This person must be the genetic offspring of Lehman Russ, the space wolf of Fenris. Fenris Yolda Vlak. Fenris Yolda, mortal. You know the old words. Good words. Strong as a rock. Sharp as the blade of a force axe. Deadly as a kraken's tooth. A force axe, specifically. The red haired giant's jaw stopped their work when he heard me say that. Emotions are hard to read on the crudely hewn face, but you think you have surprised him. The words are spoken in the guttural rasp of an inveterate killer, wholly in keeping with the man's formidable appearance, but you did not expect him to slip into poetic epithets so readily. So clearly my character doesn't really know the space wolves, cause man, they'll, they'll, they fucking love poetic epithets, if anything. I'll continue. What do you want? Picking a piece of meat from between his teeth, the warrior resumes his murmured singing. Between the lines of his song, he tosses out that. I study the man. The huge body with straggly, overgrown red hair perfectly cut suits the deep, chilling voice of this man, or of his, this beast in the guise of a man. Tribal scar like tattoos cover his chest, arms, and back. You glimpse intricate braids in its mass of unwashed hair. His body bears so many pale scars that you cannot count them all, and muscles bulge beneath his skin like boulders. He looks like a statue carved from stone. It is clear that captivity has sapped this prisoner of none of his physical power. 
Your assessment is confirmed when you spot the remains of a drukari in the pile of carrion at his feet, likely one of the homunculus servants. The drukari flesh appears to be making a fine snack for your new acquaintance. I'll listen to the song. You do not know the language. The sound seems crude and mangled, but entirely lacking the harsh dignity of a form of gothic, while also sounding similar to the rumble of a landslide. Sharp and choppy guttural phrases tumbling forth in a harsh rhythm. Sure, I'll try. Enjoy the singing. Fuck! I'll be right back. Okay, second try. Try to join in the singing. Failed, okay. Be right back. Uh, third try. Succeeded, hell yeah. Close your eyes and enter the flow of the song. Like slipping into a fast flowing mountain river. Words rise up naturally in your mind. They are not the same ones sung by the prisoner, but you sense their aptness. Verse flows from your lips. Full of surprising poetic metaphors and bloody details of a nameless hero fighting monsters under the light of unfamiliar stars. You are the one who has shot the lord of the Skjalds, I see. <laughs> In the long haul, some of my brothers would be eager to tell you of their exploits so that you would sing a saga of their deeds. He looks at. When the song ends, he looks at you in surprise, the ice in his eyes thawing slightly. Who are you? I am a wolf. You sure are. First glance, the man does not strike you as possessing great intellect. He's clearly more accustomed to mauling and killing than thinking. But you detect a certain shrewdness in his eyes. After looking you over, he says, says that. Uh... I suspect he is more intelligent than that description would suggest. How did you come to be here? My pack answered the Inquisition's call and came to the Coronas Expanse. There was a battle, and then the young wolves yearning to be meat for their brotherlings. To a feast of bolters they went out roving. Though they were but few, one long fang with them went loping. Not to see them cut down by sides and clean, the pups he sent scattering, and there stood alone the paths guarding. For a foe he long spied, one worthy, among unworthy. The song of swords singing, they clashed with clamor and skill. Until stood the old wolf upon the bones. Then, by the birds of battle, was he brought down. One long, long of fang. Are you a long fang? That's a thing in the Space Wolves, right? Uh, I believe that's ro That should be roughly equivalent to a sergeant in other chapters. I know a bit about Space Wolves. They were never my favorite, but I am Swedish and surrounded by Swedes. So you better fucking believe that a lot of people fucking love the Space Vikings in their tabletop war game where they can pretend to be space vikings and yell viking shit as they roll dice and pretend to kill each other with axes, you know? Continue. <laughs> oh, was that clear enough? This saga sounds less interesting in prose. Uh, fair enough. Uh, I get what you mean. Why does the homunculus keep you in a cage? I can figure. For his own safety. When I am not busy killing a human spawn in the arena, the Xenos fear my will. Uh, 
We suffer the same fate. I was also captured by the Sinos, and they have forced me to kill for their entertainment. But I sit in a cage while you roam freely around their city. They do not fear you. Maybe there is a reason for that? Maybe Ooh. our fates are not the same at all. Yeah, he's kinda sharp. I wish to know more about your brothers. That butcher sent you to spy for him, did he? Or do they know nothing of the Emperor's Angels, the Space Wolves of Fenris? Or the Great Layman Ross in your corner of the galaxy? I was thinking more about like your specific pack. Why the fuck are you here? First of all. Oh well. Don't they feed you? A predator does not eat only when it is hungry. There are many reasons to eat. Looks at you in mild surprise and understanding. There must have been a reason for this bloody repast. Obliquely, I answer. For a moment, the vicious grin loses some of its sincerity, and the bloodthirsty prisoner casts an intense, scrutinizing look at your face, as if trying to read your thoughts. I do know that space marines can eat, like, brains to get information. Not just space wolves, mind you. Any space marine can do that. Most space marines. Unless there is something wrong with the particular organ that does that, which I don't remember which it is. I don't have all the 19 organs memorized. I, th I think the black carapace is one of them. The second heart, third lung, etc. You must be planning to escape it, yeah? And why do you want to know? Bitch, what do you think? I have no more questions. You know, a warrior such as you could prove useful to me. To get what you want, you will have to convince two very headstrong individuals. Me and my captor. That claw-handed Xenos. I really want a space marine. I wanna want the space marine. Ah, so this is indeed story progression. Tavansius rushes about the laboratory, snatching up certain tools, vials, and notes. He conceals some of these items inside his own body cavities and destroys the rest. I have done what you wanted. The homunculus glares at you and roars furiously. This isn't what I desired. Not to this extent. The cult of the fatal thirst craves blood, specimen. Your blood. My blood. Ah, fuck. I can't do the voice today. Why not? <clears throat> One must be astoundingly insensitive to the vibrations of the dark city not to realize this. I can't get the fry going. Hmm. The homunculus notices Marashai. Draken Aziresh, after you went against the Archon of the Reaving Tempest, you decided to, did to violate the wishes of the Archon of the Black Heart as well. You were thrown into the arena to die. You show wretched incompetence by defying your masters. Ah, uh, how do I do his voice anyways? My presence offends you, I see. Good. Marajai sneers and looks around. You have made yourself quite comfortable here in the chasm. Is this where you have been have kept the things that you dare not bring to the spire of the reaving tempest? It must be vexing, having to abandon it all as you flee the cult's wrath. One of Devancia's limbs twitches and strikes blindly. Only Marajai's reflexes save him from a fatal neck wound, but the homunculus makes no further attempts to attack. He seems to care more about his subordinates and instruments than the insufferable Cabalite.
I do not care about Kekeros. You promised to help me get out of here. You hear mockery in the monkey's voice. Forget the old promises, monkey. This is war. My loyal servants are being slaughtered across the chasm. I cannot take any more specimens away with me, and the ones I have already packed are far more valuable than you. Marashai's face suddenly changes, his mocking grin gone, and he fixes his gaze on the monculus. Into the spire of the reaving tempest, to hide under the wing of Eremeris, the an archon fallen into disgrace. What an imprudent choice. You should run away from her and her troubles, unless you are somehow connected to her crime. Tavansia glares at Marajai. You were not in a position to know about the Archon's plans before, much less now. And so unravel the rotten threads in the tapestry of fate. A long talk, there is the, here is the true nature of the Dark Ones, a lie hidden behind sweet promises. Having learned from a cruel mistake, I foresaw this outcome. Belated wisdom. Do I have to ask? That's of course. I, I get why they want me dead. You hum humiliated them, monkey. Kekeros and I agreed that she would send fresh meat against you, but she decided to undermine my authority by sending her to her best. You slaughtered them, and so it was the cult's authority that suffered. But who cares about the pathetic monkey? You are my lackey, and thus it is I who is responsible for undermining the cult's authority. You should be careful what you wish for, Xenos. And it was enough for you to just kill them. You enticed one of the blood-sin proselytes who joined the monkey's side. As the entire chasm watched, a slap in the face of the cult wasn't enough for you. So you decided to spit in its face as well. And that would be Marashai? Yup. Oh, but there is more. I hope Kekeros and Sinistoria are now writhing in horror at the mere thought that their headless subordinates have lost the Kabbalite who was sentenced to death by Nasrake himself. First they decided to play a charity by making me a proselyte. And now they let me slip through their fingers. Oh, I wish I could see the succubus's face when she give, was given her n the news. Fuck, I can't read. You dispatched me to kill the witches. Are you telling me you did not anticipate such consequences? It was supposed to go differently. Your performance was supposed to be a lesson in respect, not a de declaration of war. You would have killed someone unimportant and made the witches' vanity bleed. The witches would have received your head as a salve for the wounded pride. And they would have been reminded for a time that I was still someone who could greatly complicate their existence. Instead, you have failed me, all of you. Kekeros did not keep her word, and you did not die in a trap. It is all your fault that things have spiraled out of control. So your original plan still had us all dead, you self-dissected creep. Man, for all their, like, shit talk about us mo fucking humans, I almost called us monkeys. Fuck. I've been reading too much goddamn Dark Elder dialogue. Uh, for all their fucking shit talk about how lesser we are, they're some stupid idiots. Like, this overcomplicated plan of his to send a political message through use of me and my crew so obviously was full of places where it could go wrong even if the witches fucking dumbasses a lot of them that's my takeaway can I let's have that angle so what's the plan I will leave the anatomical opera and withdraw to the spire of the reaving tempest the witches won't dare to settle their scores under the eye of my patrons, so the Cabal's valuable servant is safe from their ire. As for you, go out into the streets of the chasm and die, or go to the arena and try to kill Kekeros. Even if you succeed, you will still die. 
The homunculus mutters furiously and hotly. I should have stopped wasting time on this idiocy long ago. All those pathetic simpletons did was weaken my focus and distract me from my masterpiece. At last I can devote all of myself to it. So, I managed to bring about your downfall after all. Unholy spawn? Should I... Sure. His voice is filled with loathing. Your insight is astounding, specimen. But have you noticed that you have also doomed yourself? Tabansi has become so absorbed in his thoughts that he starts shearing off pieces of his own flesh with his scissor-like claws. Enter the arena. The succubi will not pass up this chance to gut you in front of an audience. If you could simply wound Kekeros, it would give us both enough time to escape. For that, I would be willing to sacrifice the deadliest and most valuable specimens in my collection. If you manage to kill her, run. Sinistoria will not let such impertinence go unpunished, and her wrath is a hundredfold more dangerous than Kekeros' fury. Do not return to the chasm. You will find no shelter there. Seek salvation in other spires. You may prolong your agony for a short time. Jai turns to you with a grim smile. Well, Sherin, I don't know if we should be celebrating our victory or our final moments. One way or another, we'd better get sloshed. No time like the present. Let's head straight to our hideout at the Shriekers' Den. That seems like a flag for me to go to the hideout for story progression. Master Tavansius, allow me to take the Space Marine you keep in a cage. No. The homunculus snaps curtly and he returns to his work. Noticing that you are still waiting for something, he hisses irritably, still not taking his eyes off the experiment. If you wish to continue wasting my time with your pathetic pleading and whining specimen, then you know the price. Pay up or get out. Fine. I think. Course master. Arena beast claws. Tavansi has extracts the piece of flesh, examines it fastidiously, palpating and tearing off fragments, then places it in, in some sort of container. It will do. Obedient specimen. So be it. You have earned a few minutes of my attention. The answer is still no. This particular monkey beast specimen has phenomenal parameters. I previously studied two other specimens of the same breed, but have yet to untangle their genetic secrets. He also performs well enough in the arena. I will not part with the last specimen. With him, I would definitely succeed. It would further both of our interests. Fuck. If you are so helpless, then what use was there in letting you live? Surely it is dangerous to keep such a prisoner in your abode. What if he escapes and comes for your head? Do you truly fuck? think some monkey can frighten me? His body may be strong, but his mind is simple. And therefore, he is no more difficult to keep under control than any other member of your species. Surely, the loss of some monkey would never, could never impede the work of a mind as great as yours. Perhaps the genetic subtype of all three specimens was defective. And this is the cause of my limited success. In that case, the loss of this specimen would not be significant. I recommend pain as a means of pacification. And you can take his armor. I found it entirely unintriguing. Fuck! I gotta ask. Since you are intent on fleeing, you might as well release my companions. I cannot tr transport them to my new sanctuary. You may take them. Some may still be alive. But do not allow them to use their abilities until I have left the anatomical opera. 
Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, cool. Where is Heinrichs then? He should be over this way, surely. Start with that. Steal some stuff while we're at it. No Heinrichs here. I don't think. I have a backup plan. Is he on the map? I don't see him on the map. This way then. Didn't he say that I could take Heinrichs with me? Rise to the top or get left in the dust. Let's make a deal. Oh shit. Did I fucking miss something, bro? About you. Oh, activate switch. I can activate a bunch of switches. Keep your eye on the prize. Like... So... I don't know what that did. money to be made what it, what does this do oh it's opening uh, bridges let us not dawdle Stingering. 100% armor penetration. Sure, I'll take all that stuff. Never you mind. Let's... Let's... I guess we'll grab the Space Marine first. I don't... Maybe he'll just go to the camp. I don't know how he's gonna feel about me having a Dark Elder with me. I need your help. Prisoner looks at you expectantly without stopping his chewing. But his expression shifts subtly, shifts subtly as if his affected crudeness of mind and manner has been replaced by focus and cunning. I am planning an escape. Are you with me? Why would I be? You are a stranger. How can I trust you? You could be an enemy. Worse. You could be an idiot. We are both servants of the Emperor. We ought to help each other in this perilous place. Do you serve the Emperor? Or are you a puppet with the hand of that Xenos butcher up your arse? How am I to know whose words you speak? Yours or his? How am I to know what plot you are trying to draw me into? What do we tell him? I did quick save right before, I think. Uh, stay in your cage then, fool. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Quest failed. <coughs> Fuck. Do I have to be dogmatic to get the Space Marine? It 
the space wolf. Surely that's not it. I'll just say the things I did. Do you serve the Emperor? Or are you a puppet with Are you a cow then, afraid to come out of your cage? Don't you want to slay Xenos with me? Why didn't you say that at the start? <laughs> what did you expect? Did you think you would wrap the scent of slaughter under the bloodthirsty killer's nose and it would rush off to do your bidding? I guess I'll have to say this. Tavansius gave you to me. Join my party. Gave? Well, if he gave me to you, step into this cage and take me. You think a filthy blasphemous Xenos could do whatever he pleases with me? Oh, come here, you wretch! You have hidden on the other side of those bars long enough! Come in here and repeat your filthy words so I can kick them back into your bloody stinking muscle! <laughs> okay, shit. Okay, okay. Ooh. Unclenching butt cheeks. And from what I can smell, you did not soil yourself in the process. You should be able to smell that. I respect those with courage. I can work with you. It seems Tervantius is not as clever as he likes to appear. Nope. If he's letting me out of the cage, <laughs> the joke is on him. <laughs> Good steel I have already. But if we are going hunting, I will need my wolf skin. That would be his armor. I'm just gonna continue. He. Uh, I realized. Uh, also, glint, snarl, reveals fangs, uh, deranged expression, harsh voice, uh, frightening roar turns into. He did all those things happen with the voice acting. Uh, and then he picks up his battle knife, decorated with scarlet runes. Uh, seems to be his last surviving possession. Your space maroon. Ulfur is a space wolf, a mighty space marine. His proportions instill respect in his allies. Ulfur does not use cover or conventional human armor and weapons. His unique ability allows him to once per combat instead of losing consciousness to become incapacitated for two rounds. Oh, damn. While in this state, cannot be targeted by attack. Once two rounds have passed, can act again and gains 50% of his maximum wounds. Furthermore, he's an arch militant. Okay, good. Uh, for the purpose of this ability, uh, attack traps are single shot. Okay. I kind of just want to ditch Marashai for the time being. We have a space marine! Space marine. I finally have the fucking space marine. Let's look at the space marine. And let's see. Didn't. Didn't we get his armor? Didn't fucking. Didn't we get the fucking armor from goddamn the bitch, man? Tervantius. Didn't he say he would give us the armor? Ah, whatever. We, we have a space marine. He's, he's big, strong, and cool. And we're gonna level him up next time when we're back. See you later.